Hi guys, sorry I've been away for a little while. This is season three, the start of season three. We've had a little bit of a break because we had quite a lot of videos to do for the other channel. Also, I've been very, very into doing my flying stuff at the moment. But in the meantime, I have also been vlogging and we've got loads of stuff for you coming up very soon that's gonna look a little bit like this. We popped to our local swimming pool where Emily Bumhead did a fantastic job of swimming five kilometers for Mary Curie Cancer Research. Also, I randomly hitch a lift in a 1944G and also get chased by my drone. I'm building a new pergola over the patio of the office and I'm gonna try and bend some seven by two timber. That's gonna be difficult. Plus we popped to Frankfurt for a quick work trip. And in a few weeks time, I'm also popping to Bratislava to do a film about the Cold War bunkers there. Included along the way, are all the random things that I always get up to and of course, more flying lessons. And also you'll get to see behind the scenes as I build the set for my next video for my other YouTube channel, Plumber Parts. But before that vlog goes out, that's gonna be in the next few weeks, I'm gonna do a series of videos about the last few months of my flying training because I don't think there's actually a video about that on the internet. And I think that's gonna help out people who aspire to be a pilot, who've just started their PPL, or are getting to this stage and don't know what to expect. This is gonna to include today's video, which is gonna be about radio telephony. Because of the fact that we've got the radar transfer, would I now ask to move over to Lake and Heath frequency? It's going to include the reading of the flying orders and the information about the aircraft that I'm flying. And it's even going to include a cancelled skills test, which was horrible and how I felt about it. And also the skills test and me eventually passing my private pilot's license as well. As I speak to you now, I haven't passed it, so I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video series and let's get on with it. So by this point guys, I've completed my solo, I've completed my cross country qualifying navigation, and now we're getting ready for the skills test. Jeremy, my instructor, and this, if you don't know about instructors and how to choose them and that sort of thing, a good sign is if your instructor starts to cancel lessons because he says that they're pointless for you or you're not gonna learn anything. What I mean by this is Jeremy, my instructor said, James, I think that now, rather than continuing to do your lessons, you've still got six written exams to do and you've still got your radio telephony to do, so why don't you go off and get all those things polished up? I used a great ground school in Essex, Steve Wilkes, to do all my ground exams and finish them off and they were really really enjoyable days where not only did we learn loads but Steve is also a complete fount of knowledge he flies Spitfires he flies Tiger Moths and he's an ex-commercial pilot as well so he's got an absolute treasure trove of knowledge so then I've just completed my very last um, written flying exam <laughs> I've got no more exams to do I've just done nine over the like the last year uh, and this is my last one today, which is Aircraft General, which is actually the, one of the easier ones for me, I found. So yeah, it's been wicked doing that here today. It's absolutely gorgeous place to train. I mean, look at it. Yeah, look at that. So we've got, there's a there's a computer screen for each person, Steve's area up there. And uh, yeah, we have loads of bits and pieces, like interesting things set about for us. So Steve's house is where I'm driving to right now to sit down and do a day's radio telephony revision in preparation for my exam later that week. Lights off. Oh. Which is the rain when I come in? Yeah, so I'm here, I've got here. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I don't know how much I'm supposed to be filming today. Well, well, I don't know how much I'm going to be allowed to film. So we're just going to take this little camera in on this little setup that we've got with no mics. Really, really basic. Grab a cup of tea. These guys have got the coolest cats in the world as well. Really relaxing place to learn. I love it. This will be my last time here as well, all being well. Let's see how it goes. Hello Diane, how are you? <laughs> Camera on. Hello, Look at that, I'm all ready to go. Sorry. <laughs> Meet Diane, Steve's wife. She makes the lovely teas that we have at tea time and literally they're as good as any cricket tea. Absolutely delicious. So this is where everything's happening. I have, well, let's have a look. I'll shut this door. So I've got all my radio codes, squawk codes and stuff like that. The route that we're flying will be on here and then there'll be maps that look just like like this one, well, I mean maps that look just like this one here as well that we're going to be going through. Got my, my water bottle. Then I've got my radio on here that I can change the frequency on whenever I like. 
uh, push the torque button on or off and then an emergency light as well for when we do power failures and also obviously the headset so this is me for the day <laughs> see how we go to be honest the more practice the better the more prepared for the exam the better I only want to take it once so the system that Steve has set up in his house is really simple. He sits in another room with the same controls and the same headset and also has the route in front of him. But he also has control over a small plane that's on the screen and other planes that might appear on the screen as well. So we can practice radioing through that we can see a plane or that there's a plane in trouble. Or sometimes he'd ask whether we could see a plane on our two o'clock. And if there wasn't one on the screen, then that meant we couldn't and we'd go back. It was very, very good real world practice. Another thing about Steve as well is that he is a fantastic actor. The whole time he'd do radio transmissions to other aircraft and do voices of that particular pilot talking back. That was excellent practice for the unspoken art of when you should actually start a transmission, when you think that the other aircraft has finished its transmission to ATC, and making sure that you don't butt in or jump the queue, something that I've heard quite a few pilots do during my training. It's worth mentioning that Steve is a qualified air traffic controller as well, and does regular shifts up at Duxford as a FISO when he's not flying. I think we pointed at it on here. Oh right, yeah, so have a look. Because uh, we're coming over Bennington, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, have a look. Aha! That's it. That's one. Marvellous. Hello, anyone there? Anyone there? No, they're not. They're not. <laughs> Gone out for a wee. I was with Steve all day, had a fantastic lunch as well with loads of crab sticks and I love olives so I was very happy there. Before we actually went on and did some final big long run throughs of quite long and radio telephony wise intricate kind of routes. In a minute I'll go through that whole route, I'll skip through bits where there's nothing happening and then you can get an idea of how many radio calls you actually have to do. Because Steve would come in and every time I pressed the button he'd make a dash on a piece of paper and he'd come through and he'd say look how many dashes you've just done there in that 25 minute exercise. And it really brought home how much you have to speak on the radio. And this brings me to what are the requirements for you to be able to pass the radio telephony exam when going for your pilot's license. Um, you need to obviously have a basic command of English, but it's important to see what you're doing in the aeroplane as at all times clearly telling everyone where you are, what you're going to do, and also your ability to write down accurately instructions and information, input them into the aircraft if necessary, and also be able to respond accurately and clearly what those instructions were. If you can get into your head that there's no room for ambiguity in radio telephony, because that's basic, you're not standing in front of someone looking at them, you're telling them something over a radio and they could be 20 or 30 miles away. So that's why we have to repeat everything back, because then we know it's fully accurate. Another thing that I found a few people have asked, and I've heard other students asking it when we were at Duxford, if they don't hear something properly, what should they do? Whatever you do, don't feel embarrassed. In your interests of safety, to just quickly pop back over and say, um, your call sign, didn't hear that, can you please repeat? There's an analogy for radio telephony, which is it's like playing tennis, because what you want to do is just hit the ball back. So when someone says something like, class wings 2-0, Q&H change to 1026, you just say, uh, Q&H changed to 1026, Classic Wings 20, and then you put the Q&H into your altimeter. That's a little rally that we've just had there. So let's go through a whole practice exercise of radio telephony with Steve in prep for my exam. Right, we're ready to go. Field Radio Classic Wings 20 request radio check on 130 decimal 5. Roger request airfield information Classic Wings 20. Okay. Uh, 5 also um, request airfield information Classic Wings 20. Runway in use, 09 left with the left hand circuit, QNH 1023, Classic Wings 20. Classic Wings 20, taxiing.
Plus it means G0 out the hold, ready for departure. Roger, Classic Wings 2-0. Classic Wings 2-0, ascending into the overhead. Classic Wings 2-0, overhead. Classic Wings 2-0, request frequency change to Watershim Approach 125.8. Watershim Approach, Classic Wings 2-0, request max penetration and basic service. Mats penetration approved, basic service. Classic Wings 2-0, Cessna 172, routing Andrewsfield to Andrewsfield via Watersham, Lake and Heath, Witten, Hemel VRP, Stapleford and Clacton, altitude 2,000 feet, QNH 1023 1POB request max penetration and basic service. Squawking 4502, Classic Wings 2-0. 2000 feet 1023 basic service, Classic Wings 2-0. Roger, have visual, Classic Wings 2-0. At this point, I don't know if you can hear, but Steve is currently talking to that other aircraft. Report turning Watersham, Classic Wings 2-0. Roger, have visual with traffic, Classic Wings 2-0. Classic Wings 2-0, request. Uh, request uh, radar handover to Honington, Classic Wings 2-0. Affirm handover to Lake and Heath after turnover Watersham, Classic Wings 2-0. Roger, Classic Wings 2-0. Report of being Rattlesden, Classic Wings 2-0. Uh, Roger, have visual with traffic, looks like a glider, Classic Wings 2-0. Classic Wings 2-0, just gone past Rattlesden. For Lake and Heath Squawk 0405, Classic Wings 2-0. Service 2-0, roger. Contact Lake and Heath now with call sign and squawk only. Bye-bye. Contact Lake and Heath on 128.9 with squawk and call sign only. Classic Wings 2-0. About now you can probably pick out Steve's American accent. Classic Wings 2 0, Squawk 0405. Traffic Service, Classic Wings 2 0. Roger, have visual with traffic, Classic Wings 2 0. Roger, Classic Wings 2-0. 
A firm have visual, Classic Wings 2 0. And so it went on. We did exactly what we're doing now, just effectively playing tennis, taking in the instructions, writing them down, inputting them into the aircraft, and then repeating them back to the people who'd given them to us. Classic Wings 2 0, North of Beam, Milton Hall. Classic Wings 2 0, North of Beam, Soham. Roger, visual with traffic, Classic Wings 2 0. Roger, have visual, Classic Wings 2 0. Roger, have visual, currently over Witchford, Classic Wings 2 0. Roger, visual with Iron 5 2, Classic Wings 2 0. Roger, Classic Wings 2 0. Squawk 7000, contacting Whittam on 134.5, Classic Wings 2 0. Witten Radio, Classic Wings 2 0, request ATZ Transit. It was now that Steve decided to throw a spanner in the works. Mayday, 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 Witten Radio, Classic Wings 2 0, Cessna 172, engine failure, looking to land at force landing at Abbotsley, altitude descending 2000 feet, 1 POB. Roger, Classic Wings 2-0. I then obviously realised I selected the wrong fuel tanks, switched over to the right tank and my engine started again. Witten Radio, Classic Wings 2-0. Uh, cancel Mayday and Distress. Repeat, cancel Mayday and Distress. Engine failure rectified. Uh, we'll continue the flight as planned. Classic Wings 2-0. Report my level at 2,000 feet. Classic Wings 2-0. Classic Wings 200, 2000 feet. Witten Radio, Classic Wings 200, request frequency change to Little Grandson Radio 118.7. Oh, because oh, I got it right down on here as radio, sorry. Andrews Field Radio, Classic Wings 2-0 inbound. Classic Wings 2-0, Cessna 172, routing from Clacton, altitude 1,300 feet, QNH 1019, 1POB. Uh, request joining downwind for landing at 09. Romain use 09 with right hand circuit, QNH 1020, QFE 1010, Classic Wings 2-0. Squawk 7010, Classic Wings 20. Roger, Classic Wings 20. Classic Wings 20, downwind. Classic Wings 20, final. <laughs> Roger, Classic Wings 20. <laughs> Vacate left, Classic Wings 20. Classic Wings 2-0, vacated runway and taxiing back to the hangar. So as you can see there, that was a really intense, uh, fun day. I had so much fun working with Steve doing this. Um, at the end of the uh, training day, Steve said, Jimmy, you will be absolutely fine. Go to the exam and do it. I didn't actually film at the exam itself. So what I'd like to say about the exam itself is the route was about a million times more simpler than the routes that Steve had done for us. There were no other like planes appearing on the screen or Steve wasn't doing any voices in the background of him talking to other pilots, things like that. Um, and yeah, it was just miles, miles easier. My examiner briefed me really well for it, um, Barry. And uh, we went through the exam just in the way that he was sat in another room. I was sat in one room and we just did the proper uh, procedure as we went along. One thing I would say is Steve's program is wicked, really good. He's got loads of different routes in there. Um, so you can say, so we can do different air traffic control transits, VFR transit, MAT transit, MATS transit, loads and loads of different stuff and it was just wicked. What I wanna say is if you want to pass your radio telephony, it's not as hard as you think it is. And I can say that once I went back uh, doing my actual flight training back in the plane, my RT was so much better. I was so much more confident and it was just great to have that license already there. So when I do pass my PPL, and I really do hope I do, uh, the RT thing's there already and I'll have my PPL hopefully quite quickly. Yeah, so that's where we are. That's where we are with it. So I will come back. I don't, I want these last three, three months worth of training to be there for people who are, who are getting to this stage and they don't feel ready 
and I want them to know that that's what I felt as well. And I know I haven't passed yet, but I will. And I want to give people the confidence that even though you're not ready, this is what you can do to get prepared. And this is what actually happens. So I'm going to keep doing that in this video, in this small mini video series. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Please uh, hit that subscribe button. Please comment and like as well. The next video in this flying series is going to be about the polishing up that me and Jeremy have done in the weeks leading up to my first cancelled skills test. So we're going to talk about all the manoeuvres that we do, uh, we're going to talk about the navigation that we do, and we're going to talk about the little things that Jeremy has just added in right at the end to say you need to know about this. So I'll be doing that in the next flying video guys, I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching, see you soon.